Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once more to the place I have been calling my house of horror. There is another place, however, that many people, rightly or wrongly, regard as a house of horror. I mean, their dentists. Personally, I can never understand this dread of the dentist. After all, he's an expert with years of experience probing inside people's heads. All you need to do is to trust him. You're at his mercy, of course, but he doesn't want to hurt you. Unless, of course, he happens to bear a grudge against you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, accept my invitation to a day at the... Yes, just a little more there and I've done. Are you still feeling relaxed? Uh, oh, it's good. Here we go, then. I must make a good job of this one, mustn't I? I don't want to think of my last filling coming. I wouldn't do it at all. No, no, no. You'll be buried with this filling, Mrs. Phelps. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Peters, but Mr. Charles is retiring this week. Well, didn't you get a letter? Well, yes, today. I'm sorry. I don't know how we could have overlooked you. A doctor... Yes, yes, he's giving up the house with a practice. A, a Dr. Maybury is taking over. A very capable man. Of course, Mr. Charles made sure of that, so if you'd like... Yes. Yes, to phone on Monday. You'll be able to arrange with him. Yes, I am sorry. Oh, goodbye. Come on. Can I help you? Uh, can you fit me in this afternoon? Fillings come out. Well, I'm terribly sorry, but, but I'm afraid... I know it's short notice, but I don't mind paying over the odds well over if you like. Well, it's not a matter of money, Mr... Uh, Houseman, Fred Houseman, I am on your books. Well, I'm sorry, I don't remember well, you... Well, I was ten years ago. I've never taken myself off, so I should still be there, shouldn't I? Do you mean to say you haven't been to the dentist... Yeah, but... uh, I've got perfect teeth. It's only this one, look. Well, you think? Well, I'm very sorry, Mr. Houseman. If you are on our list, you should have had a letter. I'm afraid Mr. Charles is retiring early. He's on his last patient now, in fact. If you'd like to ring on but, Monday... But it's only four o'clock. Surely you can fit me in. I'll pay. I'll pay. I'm sorry, but he gave instructions. Will you come in now, please, Betty? Ah, yes, Mr. Charles. I'll ask him, but I really don't think he'll have the time. Wait there, please. Amalgam, Betty. Three will do, I think. Now, I'm just going to put this thing around the tooth. A little wide. Uh -huh. All right? Uh -huh. Huh, Someone's yeah. just turned up wanting emergency treatment, Mr. Charles. I told him I didn't think he could deal with him, but he's very persistent. No, no, I really haven't the time. N not too tight? Uh -huh. The removals people are due in the morning. I must help my wife finish off. Yes, of course. Is he one of ours? Well, he says he is. He had a filling ten years ago, but he hasn't been here since. Says he has perfect teeth. Has he indeed? So what does he want with me? Here we go, Mrs. Phelps, all right? Uh, yeah. Uh. He says the filling's come out. Can't have been one of mine, then. What's his name? Houseman Fred Houseman. <gasps> I'm terribly sorry, uh. Mrs. Phelps. Careless of me, all right? Uh, uh, yeah. Nearly done. Fred Hausman. Do you remember him? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There we are. All done now. Oh. I'll just take this out. Mm. Now, bite gently. Again. Now, grind your teeth together. That's good. Again. Splendid. Now, just rinse your mouth out now. I'll finish off, Betty. Go and tell Mr. Hausman that I'll be pleased to see him. Are you sure? Oh, yes. Quite sure. Oh, very well. Mr. Charles says he can fit you in. Oh, thank God for that. Oh, you don't know what it takes for me to go to a dentist. You'd like to fill in this form? Hmm? Oh. Hmm. Is that why you haven't been for so long? I tell you, my teeth are perfect. No. No, I, uh, I had a, a, a bad experience when I was young, you know. No, I'm not afraid of anything else, you know. I do everything. Rock climbing. Potholing, and here I am in a muck sweat. Oh, ridiculous. You'd be surprised how common it is. Well, common it may be, but I'm not. I don't run with the herd, you know? No. May I have the form? Mm. Yep. Thank you. Mr. Charles won't keep you long. He's just finishing. Oh, I hope so. Oh, can't stand the waiting. I just wanted to get the, the damn thing done with. If it makes you feel any better, he has a special technique. Don't you? I know about his technique. Why do you think I'm here? <laughs> he, he, he still doesn't use the needle, does he? Oh, Mr. Charles doesn't believe in local anaesthetics, if at all possible. No, what right, he does... Right, right. Is... <laughs> no, I, I hate the needle worst of all. Well, that's why I went to him in the first place. All my life, I've been obsessive about dental hygiene. You know what I mean? What, to keep the damn dentists away. And he did too, until I broke a damn tooth. I must say, though, Mr. Charles did a good job. Ten years ago, that was. And I can still remember the state I was when I came in that door. 
I'm sure. Once I was sat in, sat in that chair. Oh, you know, somehow he, he got me relaxed, you know. Hypnotism, is it? What, what does he do? I, I really don't know. He says music is very important. Yes, well, I don't give a damn how he does it as long as he does it again today. Oh, thank God I was in the neighbourhood. Oh, you no longer live here? But I, I've written it on here, haven't I? Epsom. Nice little place. Detached. Pony in a paddock for little Polly. That's my daughter. All my own work started off with nothing. No rich daddy for me, you know. <laughs> I thought you said he wasn't going to be long. Goodbye, Mr Charles. Oh, oh Mrs Phelps, if you just sign here before you go. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, should I pay now? No, no, to... I'll send you a bill as usual. Your letter will be forwarded on. Such a pity he's going. He's been so good. Dr Mabry is very highly spoken of, you know. Well, I hope he's half as good as Mr Charles. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs Phelps. Betty? Uh, yes, Mr. Charles. You can send Mr. Hausman in now. Uh, very well. If you go straight in. Right. Ah, oh, Mr. Hausman, come in. <coughs> Look, uh, before you start, there's uh, something you ought to know. But I do, Mr. Hausman. What? I know all about you. You remember me? Oh, yes, of course. Well, after ten years? I remember you, Mr. Hudson. Well, yeah, I, I did kick up a bit of a fuss, I suppose. You did indeed. I've never known such a bad case of odontoatrophobia. Is that what you call it? Fear of the dentist. Oh. Yes. But I managed to get you to relax, didn't I? Oh, I still don't know how you did it. Do sit down. Um. No, 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 no. Not there. In the easy chair. Oh. That's it. We'll um, talk for a while till you're properly relaxed. There's no hurry. You're not pushed for time, I hope. Nobody expecting you, waiting for oh, you? No, no. Nobody knows you're here? No. no. Why? Well, you know, the relaxation process sometimes takes a little time. Sometimes people like to ring up their loved ones, tell them not to wait. It helps put their minds at rest. Oh, no, no, no. That's all right. But it only happened over lunch. What did? Oh, the uh, filling came out. Yes, of course. <laughs> I was wondering how you'd managed to dislodge one of my fillings. A oh, bit of chicken bone it, in a health food restaurant, would you believe? <laughs> <laughs> well, it just goes to show you never know where you're safe, do you? Don't try to relax. I'm sorry? You're trying to relax. I can see it. Oh, I is that wrong? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's the fear expressing itself. You'll not get rid of it that way. I'll tell you when to relax, though by that time you will be. You know, um, you really should have taken my advice last time. Oh, what was that? I asked you to come back, didn't I? Well, there's nothing wrong with me. You've done the filling. Yeah, exactly. So I could have really got to work on your phobia in a totally non-threatening situation. Never mind, you're here now. Better late than never, eh? <laughs> but, my goodness, you cut it fine. Another half hour and I'd have been back in the house with my wife. Do you have loved ones, Mr. Hausman? Yeah, oh, uh, well, I'm married, yes. Children? Uh, one, little Polly. Uh, I've got a photograph. Oh, no, you? please. Uh, no, pardon me, no. Not oh, as you like. So, a nice wife, a nice child, a nice little house, I expect. Where's that? Epsom, and uh, not so little, actually. No, I see by your dress you're in fair way of business, if you don't mind me seeing so. Well, I'm glad it shows. Yes, I'm sure you are. I like to wear your successes on your sleeve, don't you? Well, it's a matter of confidence. If you want to put yourself over... Look, um, <laughs> Yes? Is all this necessary? I mean, I mean, I'd really like to get this treatment finished. Of course yeah? you would. That's another symptom of your anxiety. No, I mean, I'm a busy man, Mr. Not Charles. Not at the moment, though, are you? You just told me. Oh, no. No, no so yeah. it's just anxiety, you see. And that's what I have got to get rid of. You comfortable in that chair? Oh, as comfortable as I'd like to be in a dentist's surgery. Yeah. Well, you'll get used to it. <laughs> so, um, well, what were you doing this afternoon? I'm sorry? Mm, you had lunch with a client, was it, or... Um... Yeah, with uh, a business contact. His treat, so I couldn't tell him I'd lost a fill-in on his damn chicken bone. Damn nuisance, actually. I'd planned to spend a nice afternoon in town. You didn't want to get back to your nice house, give your wife a surprise, take her some flowers, perhaps? What do you mean? Well, just getting you talking. Part of the process. Well, the, no, no. Well, I planned, since, since I was in town, I, I thought I'd, well, I'd walk through the park or something in nice weather, you know? I know. It's nice to feel mm, fancy-free sometimes. Look, look, I've got a feeling yes? that uh, well, you're getting at me in some kind of way, digging at me. Is that what you're doing? Is it annoying you? Yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, I think it damn well is. 
Why didn't I go home to my wife? And what was I going to do in the park? Look, I've come to get you to put your filling back. Not good, to... good, 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 good. Good, 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 good. It's not good that you saw through my little boy, but good that it's working. Ploy. Getting the anger out, or rather transmitting a little of the anxiety into anger. It loosens you, uh, you might say. It makes it easier to take it out, like extracting a tooth. Loosening the roots please, first before please you... Please, don't. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just testing. No... Actually, I quite understand how pleasant it can be, especially for a busy man like yourself, to find yourself with an afternoon all of your own. It takes you back to your childhood, like playing truant, forbidden fruit, eh? You walk through St. James's Park, say, or oh, perhaps Hyde Park would be better. More chances there. Sun shining, no worries, no appointments, ready for anything that might come your way, is that right? You're trying to make me angry again. Yes. Yes, actually, I'm a happily married man with a lovely wife. Did I say you were? Look, I don't think this is working. What, Mr. Hustle? <laughs> this, uh... Therapy or whatever it is. How do you know it's not? I can feel it, can I? Eh? I don't know what you did last time, but you didn't do it like this. It's not working. You're wasting my time and I'm getting fed up. Forget the therapy. Just give me a new fill-in and be done with it. Shall I tell you what's happening now? Look, do you understand? I understand well, that you have no intention of sitting in that chair. Eh? Let alone letting me anywhere near your teeth. <laughs> what's happening is that your fear is getting scared feeling vulnerable. Do you know how they used to drive the devil out of people they thought were possessed? They taunt the devil to loosen him up, twist him this way and that, and to dislodge him. And when he felt his roots beginning to slip, that devil would get really angry. Then the exorcist knew he was winning. We don't call them devils anymore, of course. We use psychiatric terms for them. But the principle is the same. Get them scared and they get angry. Do you really think your phobia would let you get into that chair? No, he'll let you get almost into it. Then he'll find something else for you to get angry about and you'll storm out swearing to sue me or something. Nothing I can do about it. I can't put them in straight jackets, can I? They'll never go to a dentist again. They let their teeth rot in private. You want to leave? Hi. Oh. No, get on with it. Well done. <laughs> so what now? Well, I think a little music. <laughs> music? Do you have any preferences? What music do you play when you want to forget unpleasant things? Yeah, about? I don't have much time for music. Oh, come on now. Everyone has time for music, if only it's wallpaper. Put it this way. You've taken a nice young lady out to a restaurant. Nice meal, rather pricey, but you hope it's going to be worth the money. Taxi back to your place for a brandy to show her your collection of Toby jugs. What the hell? Sorry? How did you know? No what? But, 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 but my Toby jugs! Have I hit a bullseye? Well, I never. I must be getting onto your wavelength. That's a very good sign. Is it? Certainly. This is going to be a success, Mr. Husband. After today, you'll never worry about going to the dentist again. I guarantee that. Yeah. I must have mentioned it la last time. Yes, <laughs> of course. And I've held it in my unconscious all these years, waiting for this moment. Isn't the mind a strange thing? Well... Then, you've got the lady into your nice little bachelor flat. This is before you married, of course. How long have you been married, Mr. Husband? Oh, uh, well, nine years. Hmm. So, there you both are, sitting on the sofa with a brandy or a scotch, wondering if the time has come to make the next move. You notice her eyes dart to the half-open door of the bedroom. You're not sure whether the expression in the eyes is apprehensiveness or anticipation. You decide to play safe and distract her with some music. Look, now, look, look. I don't think this is necessary. Mr. Husband, <laughs> I have to ask that you trust me. It is necessary, I assure you. Well, I'll choose something for you. I've got quite a good selection of tapes here. Now, something old, ten years or so ago. How's this? I used to have that album. So, I've hit the nail on the head again, have I? That's good, because you see, Mr. Hausman, there's an interesting parallel to be drawn between you, say, and your younger days, of course, before you became a happily married man with a sweet little child and a nice, not-so-little house in Epsom, between you trying to coax a young lady into your bed and me trying to coax a patient, you, for instance, into my dentist's chair. Think of the processes of dentistry. The prying fingers of a stranger in your mouth. What an impertinence. What an indignity. And then worse still, the dreadful machinery of filling, of extraction. Unclench your hands, Mr. Do you have to talk about it? Yes, I do. Trust me. So you see, what am I to you but a potential rapist intent on assaulting your most secret, most vulnerable places? Some fool of a dentist mistreated you as a child, forced your mouth open, perhaps, regardless of your cries, to insert 
his instruments. <laughs> Don't try to relax. And now, here am I trying to persuade you into the same situation again. No fear, says you're unconscious. You'll not catch me again. <laughs> And however much I tell you that this time is different, that the past is over, that this time you might even enjoy it, your unconscious won't believe me. Because for the unconscious, the past is never over and the present is only the past happening all over again. Do you understand? Oh, understanding is one thing. And the emotions are another, I quite agree. I can't argue you into that chair, Mr. Hausman, I know that. And I can't do what that criminal idiot did all those years ago and force you. You're too strong now. And besides, I find the idea of that kind of forcing quite dreadful. No, I have to seduce you into my chair. Oh, you got a job on? <laughs> oh, I have. But think back again to that night, that hypothetical night when you persuaded the young lady back to your flat to look at your Toby jugs. I've got a job on here, you might have thought. This is a tough nut to crack. On the other hand, she's still here. There was a time when she could have left after a quarter of an hour or so, after the first brandy. She's still here. Nil desperandum. And look, when you smiled, she smiled. When they smile with you, the battle's as good as won. Isn't that so? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. Uh, and now I'm going to ask you to try my chair. Oh, no. Yes. No, you haven't done anything yet. It hasn't worked. You think not? No, no, no. You'll have to do better than that. You're right. I'm a tough nut to crack. But I have done something, you see. There's a change in our relationship. Haven't you noticed? You laughed with me. You feel more at ease. You feel you can trust me, don't you? Oh, I suppose so. And I... so you can permit yourself to issue a challenge. You'll have to do better than that. In other words, whatever I'm afraid of, I'm not afraid of you anymore. I'm in control of events. I'm not a small boy here. I don't feel like letting you near my teeth, but if you think you can change my mind, you just go ahead and try. <laughs> isn't that the case? <laughs> I suppose it is. And isn't it the same with women? Hmm? When you sense that they're challenging you, the battle's as good as one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, now I'm in a position to make you a request and a promise, which you know I'll keep because you trust me. And in any case, you're in control. The request is that you try out the chair for a moment. Uh, no, no treatment, I, I, no, 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 not even a peek into your mouth. And the promise is that as soon as you say the word, you can go back into that chair again. Well? You won't look in my mouth. I promise. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> if you think it'll get you anywhere. Good. That's it. <sighs> Sit comfortably. Yeah. Leg straight, you're not on a horse. <laughs> and now I'll show you how it works. Huh? This is how we put children at their ease nowadays, you know. We treat the chair like a toy and we're all still children at heart. Apprehensive, but curious. This is how it goes. Down. <laughs> and up. <laughs> and this is how it tips back. <laughs> No, 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 you're thinking of its function. You don't need to do that. For present purposes, this chair is just a chair. Its function is to be comfortable. Is it comfortable? How can I make it more comfortable? Back a little? Up a little? Back a little. Like that? Is that better? Yes. A little more? No, right. Now. You're sure you're comfortable? I would be if it was just a chair. But it is just a chair. You're going to sit there and then you're going to leave it. Now, we're doing very well. Next stage, I want you to slip this on. Huh? What is it? Well, it's a sort of apron. It protects you. Oh, I, I, Mr. Hausman, do you trust me? Yes, yes. Of course you do. Now, just put your arms through the huh? hand. Never mind the tapes, I'll, uh, I'll bring them round here. That's right. Uh, just relax. Look, I, I, think, I think I'd like to just... A minute uh, or two, just... Mr. Hausman, just a couple of minutes. <laughs> Excuse me, just a moment. <laughs> just lie there and relax. Betty? You want me in now, Mr. Charles? No, Betty, I've decided no treatment is necessary. What? We're just going to talk a little longer, so you can go home now. Are you sure, Mr. Yes, Charles? Yes, quite sure. Don't bother to clear up, just go. Drop in in the morning and we'll settle things. Very well, Mr. Charles. Oh, and Betty? Yes, Mr. Charles. On your way out, will you ask my wife to come to the surgery? Tell her I have a surprise for her. A surprise? She'll understand. I'll tell her. Thank you. Goodbye, Betty. Goodbye, Mr. Charles. 
Look what's going on. What? What do you mean no treatment necessary? You haven't even looked in my mouth. Oh, that was just to get her to go home. Huh? She's a very conscientious... Well, why do you want her to go home? You can't do anything without her. Oh, I can, believe me. We're likely to be here for some time, you know. You wouldn't have the poor girl missing some herself. Some time? I don't understand. Look, look, look. I want to get down now. Aha. Uh -huh. Do you hear that? I want to get down now. Straight from your childhood that came, that awful childhood when you got that nasty dentist. All right, get down. <laughs> I can't. So I can't move my arms. The, 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 the tapes have got caught or oh, something. Let me see. Oh, so they have. Ah, oh, that's Betty leaving. She's gone into the house to fetch my wife. Will you hurry up and let me out? Oh, look at that. The tapes have got all tied together. Get them untied, then. What, what, what are you doing down there? Just strapping your ankles, Mr. Hudson, <gasps> so that you don't kick there. This, 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 yes? This is a straitjacket. Oh, a sort of straitjacket, yes. I had it made special. Oh, my God, nurse! She won't hear. You can't hear anything in here from the house. And anyway, she's probably on her way home by now. And the windows are very well double glazed, as you can see. Don't worry. My wife will be here any moment. She's dying to meet you. What are you talking about? What the hell is going on? You let me get out of this. You let me go. It's no use struggling, you know. That thing's very strong. We've tested it. We? Oh, look. If this is part of your so-called therapy, I've had enough of it now. I'm getting... I am getting... Get me out! Please, may I get down? Get you stuck off with this, you let me out! Please, may I get down? Please! Please, may I Please, get down? May I get down? I don't feel very well. Oh, do you not? That's a pity. Are you gonna let me out? No. You promised! Promises are very insubstantial things, Mr. Husband, as you know. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. God, this is a nightmare. Yes, you're right. A nightmare returned. It was somebody else's. Now it's yours. What's this about? Please let me out. Look, my wife knows I'm here, so she'll soon be on No, your way. wife knows nothing. No one knows anything. You told me so. Give me out this chair, please. Look, look, I'll do whatever you want. I'll give you. Give you. Give you whatever you want. What I want, you can't give me, Mr. Husband. What you owe me, you can't pay back. And what you owe my wife. I didn't know your wife. I was forgetting you struck off. You forget I'm retiring today. You are my last case, Mr. Oh, Husband. I'm going to be sick. Oh, I hope not. You do know my wife, you know. Or did once, in the biblical sense, as they say. Before you were married, of course. You don't go in for that kind of thing anymore. Well, you're a respectable family man now, aren't you? With a nice little family and a nice big house in... Look here, I demand. Be quiet, I'm talking. Your damn world, Mr. Hausman, I'm not in a position to have to keep my temper with you. If you interrupt me again, I shall take this piece of machinery here and wedge your mouth open with it. And if you still make noises, I shall hurt you. Do you understand? About twelve years ago it was. You may not remember the woman, Mr. Hausman. I dare say she was one of many. But you must remember the case. Case? Yes, I see you do. I was very distressed to read about it in the paper. I've always had a hatred of physical violence. It's what makes me a good dentist, I think. It made me. And that you'd actually got away with it. I knew you were guilty. I knew her, you see. As a patient, a sweet child. I knew she was not capable of such things as came out of the trial. And I saw the change in her. Her teeth were always good. But she took to seeing me regularly after it was all over, after she'd lost the case and thus been branded as a perverted woman. She knew I was gentle, you see, and she needed to remind herself that there was in the world at least one gentle man. And I was a good deal older. That helped. She could treat me as a father. She'd sit there in that chair, and while I pretended to examine her teeth, I'd talk to her, try to comfort her, though, of course, without alluding to the reason for her distress. Anyway, the long and short of it was... We married. It wasn't only pity... No, no. She attracted me. You'll understand please, that. Please let Only go. after that experience with you, there were difficulties. She couldn't bear to be touched. Not even by me. She told me about it eventually. A pleasant young man who took her out to a nice meal. How he persuaded her to drop into his place for a brandy and to see his collection of Toby jugs. She was an innocent and soft music. And then the rest. And then the court case, her humiliation, his release, his crowing to his friends, spreading stories, yes, I heard. And then having to get rid of the child. Your child. Oh, my God. Did you know about that? <gasps> to her, it was a sin. But she had to commit it. She'd have gone mad otherwise. 
a sin she paid for because afterwards she discovered that even if she could bear the physical contact, she couldn't bear more children. That's one of the debts you owe us. I didn't know. I didn't then know. one day in you came for a filling. I knew you, though you didn't know me. She'd pointed you out in the street once with terror. You sat in my chair and I could do nothing. I asked you to come back, but you didn't. So I waited and prepared. <laughs> and here you are. I'm sorry. Look, look. If there is anything... Any Wait! Money? You haven't heard the best bit. A very strange thing happened when I told her I'd had you in this very chair. She said, What would you have liked to do? I told her, and her eyes lit up. That night, for the first time, I made a mistake, you see, with my gentleness. My innocent child. Your fault, Mr. Hausman. Fred. Another debt. We talked fantasies that night. Nasty fantasies. About you. And for the first time as we talked, she allowed me to touch her. And that's how it's had to be ever since. You've lived with us in our marriage, Fred, in a most intimate way. They were her idea, the straight jacket and the ankle straps. She wanted to feel that somehow, someday, her fantasies would take on flesh. And here you are. She won't be long now. She'll be preparing. That's it, open wide. Splendid. Come in, my dear. See who's come to visit us. Isn't she beautiful, Mr. Houseman? Fred, isn't she? Why don't you loosen his clothing here a little, my dear? That'll do for the present. Now, where shall we start? You first, my dear. This is your treat. have an appointment with your dentist tomorrow. I hope that little tale won't cause you to cancel it. After all, it was only a story. Wasn't it? John Castle played the nasty Mr. Charles, and Mick Ford, the oh-so-unfortunate Mr. Houseman. Betty was played by Karen Archer, and Mrs. Phelps by Joan Matheson. A Day at the Dentist's was written by James Saunders, based on an idea by Arch Obler. The director was Martin Jenkins. My name is Edward de Souza, the man in black. And I hope you'll join me next week when I tell you a story that goes into the mouth in quite a different way. <laughs> <laughs>